It's all right. It's a difficult English word. He, he understands. Uh, so, so just try to. Everything sounds a little as if we are already at Yamaraj and, uh, and, and different. Also, the harmonium lacks. Uh, I guess bass. Uh, uh, good, good, good. Please stay there. And, uh, Yes, 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 we uh, We are not in there. I would like to invite you all. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Sri Madhya Vedanta My dear devotees, Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur describes to us the qualities which devotees in this world should aspire to develop. The devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu think themselves to be lower than a blade of grass. They have a natural gentleness and a natural charm, and when they speak words, the words are as sweet as nectar. The way how to practice humility in this world, says Rupa Goswami, is to practice uh, a, quantity, a quality called kshanti or 
forbearance. Forbearance is like tolerance. And I think we have the opportunity to practice this quality here. The weather is really Serbian monsoon. But we should tolerate this. Even if there is valid reason to get angry or upset, but nevertheless remains unperturbed or calm. So, so this equality can be uh, practiced actually, even though there's reason to be agitated, like the weather is too cold, or re reason to be upset because maybe uh, in some exchange with one devotee or two, we feel a little bit upset. And nevertheless, one should remain unperturbed or calm. The second quality which the devotees of Krishna in this world have, Vishay Ganda Tuhut Kriti, it means they are totally detached towards worldly dealings. They actually consider material sense gratification to be like a black hole which, which leads into nothingness or, or, or it is dangerous. This morning I was walking in, in the, through the forest and uh, I was thinking I, I should go inside the forest. Now, all of a sudden, as I was just about to go, there was such a big boar. <laughs> he made like this very uncultured sound, which you can find also in Serbian bars. Uh, and uh, <laughs> he, he actually attacked me. So I then decided to run a little bit, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I, I could see that going into the forest was like entering a dark hole which led actually to a dangerous place. So when devotees see something which looks like sense gratification, they feel this is a dark hole. If I enter there, it, it leads into a Nothingness and maybe <coughs> some, some danger will come <laughs> at me. So this is, a, this is the analogy which is given by Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati Thakur. Uh, for the devotees of Krishna, they think wealth and prosperity is not a sign of Krishna's mercy. But quite the opposite. They think that the real wealth in my life is the wealth of love of Krishna. In a worldly religion, uh, like uh, in uh, Protestantism, that's a form of Christianity, uh, it is said that if you are rich and you have a house, if you have a garden, this means God has blessed you. But, but Vaishnavas think, God has blessed me, not if I have a house or a garden or money. But God has blessed me only when I have love of Krishna in my heart. A beautiful how devotees think, isn't it? So the example of such a devotee who has these two qualities, tolerance and who also feels that material wealth and material things are not desirable is Kola Vecha Shridha. Kola Vecha Shridha uh, lived in the northern part of Mayapur where you will find a banana orchard. Do you know what is an orchard? It's like a fruit garden. How do we say? Yes, a botchnak. Yes, a botchnak. 
They both have watched that. So he lived in the midst of the botchnak. Uh, uh, it was the banana botchnak, uh, and uh, he would actually make all his living by uh, selling products from the banana tree. What this meant is, he would take the flowers of bananas and sell them. He would uh, take the stem of banana trees and then take just the middle, which is a little soft, and sell it. He would take banana leaves and make eating plates from it. You can still find in Shida Mayapur, these eating plates. And uh, he would of course sell the bananas. So whatever, his prices were very fair. He was as honest as Yudhishthira Maharaj. Never spoke a lie. Um, but whatever little income he made, he cut it into half. And uh, one half he was using for the worship of Mother Ganga. For instance, he bought ghee lamps and offered aratiks with incense. So he needed a little income to do that. And he also sometimes made these little ships, little things like this, and put some, some rice inside and allowed the rice to flow in the Ganga. And then this way, feed Mother Ganga rice. Every day he would do this without any fail. Um, when he had time, he would sit on the marketplace and he would sit, just like you see in Serbia, there are people who, are, who sit before their uh, honey glasses, you know, and their marmalade glasses. He was sitting before his um, banana tree products. And uh, every day, Goranga Mahaprabhu came by. He was at that time known as Nimai Panbeet. And he, the following scene would happen. He would go to Kolavecha Shrita, see the products, and then snatch them, snatch the bananas, and he would say, the price is much too high which you charge. Uh, let me take them uh, uh, like this, and I give you half of it. And he said, no, 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 my price is very prim. Fair. If you don't like it, go to other uh, merchants. Uh, you would see it's more. Well, they charge more. Um, but, you know, I need to insist that you give me the proper price. Because if you don't, I can't perform my puja of Mother Ganga. So, Nimai Pandit, as he was known at that time, would, uh, one day he said, I can't understand why you are so stingy. You worship your mother Ganga, but I am the source of the Ganga. If you worship me, your purpose is completed. <laughs> it was a simple devotee that Vishnu, 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 how can you say this? People who grow older become a little bit more mature, but you become more restless and more like a rascal as the day go by. Don't say this, but Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would just snatch the bananas and after arguing with Kolavecha for two hours, he just ran away. Uh, you must know the Krishna likes very much those devotees who have no material possessions but who are fully happy with devotional service. Krishna does not accept anything from those who are proud of their material education, who are proud of their wealth, their aristocracy, means their high parentage and their activities. Uh, often the men uh, or human beings throw insults on the, the poor devotees who have nothing except for Krishna. But Krishna 
does not accept even a single offering. He doesn't glance at a single offering, which does not come for his humble for his humble devotee. Therefore, Krishna liked to only go to Kolavecha Shrita. One day, Kolavecha Shrita come said, "You come here every day, and every day for two hours you quarrel with me. Can't you just go to another person?" Uh, Inside he thought, oh, please don't go, please don't go. But he said like this, can't you go? Lord Chaitanya said, no, I found a good supplier. Why should I give uh, 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 my good supplier? Every day, Kolavecha Shrita would uh, wait uh, for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come. Uh, uh, and when he saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was smiling so sweetly, he stared at him and uh, just said after some time, You have conquered my heart, you young Brahmin boy. Just take everything for free. How did Lord Chaitanya at that time look? Do you sometimes like to look at beautiful people? Maybe no one wants to say yes. I think we all stare sometimes at Govinda Nanda for instance. It's extremely beautiful. If you have to stare at someone, please stare at God. That is best. So our Shurita looked at Lord Chaitanya who looked as beautiful as the God of love. His forehead was decorated with a tilak and he had tucked his dhoti in three attractive places. His hair were very curly. Like who of you has curly? Uh, the men have no hair. <laughs> Maybe Marla Muni, you have naturally curly hair. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had very naturally curly hair, like this. Uh, and the hair was bound in a, what is called a top knot. Here. His earrings were nicely designed, and his eyes, which were very temperamental. Full, which is very restless. He was. <laughs> I think you have me. You have seen me doing this. He was just looking always like this, a very temperamental. <laughs> you know, like this. Ananta Dev personally resided in his Brahmin thread, and he was constantly chewing red beetles, beetle leaves, which made his lips as red as cherries. You know in Serbia when we have cherries, it's very red. Like this he would look so beautiful and very energetic as he came in his beautiful white dhoti. Uh, he had a golden effulgence, he looked like a sun you know, coming, uh, coming this way. And Skolavecha uh, Shrita would just pray and pray, when will this Brahman come uh, back to me? Finally, they made a settlement. Daily, Golavecha Shrita provided Goranga Mahaprabhu leaf plates, stem, hmm, and bananas from his tree. And daily, the Lord would eat his meals uh, and his rice only from the leaf plates of Shrita. My dear devotee, you must know, Kola Vecha Shrida was a real devotee. Now, then, this special day came, which we know as the Sat Pariha Baba. Any one of you remembers what this day is? I think you remember. All look 
blissfully spaced out, but concentrate, you will remember. What is the Sat Pariya Baba? Yes, it's where the 21 hours where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, who had kept his identity hidden, showed one form after the other of the God. He, he, <laughs> he had just sat down on the altar of Sri Thakur, and as he was sitting there, he would change a, a little bit like my beautiful Igore candle, who changes colors. But he would, see now it's blue, soon, but he thinks, yeah, now it's green. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would change his color into the form of Ramachandra, green. Then he would change another time and he would be Lord Nishingadev. Then yet another time he would turn into Krishna. He did this for 20 one hours. You remember yesterday we heard about Mukunda who came during this time and was uh, finally accepted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he sat there and all the devotees served him. They were fanning, they were garlanding him, they put beetles in his leaves in his mouth, they were dancing, they were praying and they were reciting different shlokas and then they started an arati Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Oh, <laughs> 
sings the whole night because hunger is ravishing his stomach. Hunger is there and therefore he does not talk. Uh, he just uh, doesn't sleep. He, he just uh, chants all night. So, uh, but Shrida didn't mind to be blessed by the atheists. In the Bhagavatam, there's a very nice verse about the devotees and their relationship to chanting. The Bhagavatam says, My devotees have minds which are free from material desires and they call the Lord constantly with ever-increasing devotion. As a response, the Lord, who knows that he is controlled by the love of his devotees, never leaves the devotees, just as the all-present sky overhead never becomes invisible. Please think about this beautiful example. A devotee who chants Krishna's name feels always the presence of Krishna, just like we feel the presence of the sky. Wherever we go, we just need to look up and we see there is the un, uh, uh, ever-present uh, sky mm. uh, which never becomes visible. So Shrita was calling out very loudly, please join him. Oh Hari! Oh Hari! Oh Govinda! Oh Govinda! Oh Madhusuda! Oh Madhusuda! Oh only goal of my life! Oh, my life. Really? <laughs> and Chaitanya, when, when, when the devotees heard, they knew this is Sridha, and they were easily finding him, even though it was night. And uh, when they came to him, they said, The Lord, who is the same Krishna who has come from the Dharman, wants to see you, Shrita. What does Shrita mean? Yes, he is that Lord who is known here as Nimai Pandit, the Brahmin boy. But he's sitting on Shriva's Thakur's altar <laughs> and he shows from his own body the different forms of Krishna. And that Lord wants to see you, Shrita. When Shrita heard it, he went like, and fainted. 
the devotees helped him up and with great effort brought him to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he enters, he sees Lord Chaitanya of the, on the altar with his golden colored uh, complexion. He looks like a sun. And he immediately pays his obeisances. But as he is still on the ground, his head down, he hears a deep voice. Oh, Shridha, look at me. So he comes up with his head like this. And as he raises the head and looks on the altar, he doesn't see golden colored Lord Shaitanya, but he sees Krishna with a blackish body like a tamal tree playing on his flute and next to him he sees someone of you said Balaram that is correct he sees Balaram every direction is filled with the light which comes from Krishna you must know Krishna is very dark but at the same time inexplainably very bright there uh, he has ten um, toenails in Serbian language you would say fingernails the down you know, toenails and they are like ten moons and he has ten other fingernails which are like ten other ten moons, twenty moons when Krishna takes his flute and plays, the toenails are dancing because he dan dances with the rhythm and the fingernails, it's twenty moons are dancing. Around what are they dancing? They're da dancing around the twenty-first moon, which is his beautiful face. And uh, when they see the beautiful face of Krishna, they see the cheek, two cheeks, there are 23 moons and then they see the forehead that's a 24th moon and then they see another moon which is a little dot on the forehead and all these moons dance, dance and dance I like this picture of Krishna, the dancing form of love very much and I remember a poem by the Sufi poet called Rumi. Rumi says, every child knows about God. Not the God of the many religious dogmas, the do's and the don'ts. Not the God of whose followers go to make war against each other. But every child knows about the God who repeats to all human beings again and again only four words Come and dance with me <laughs> Come and dance with me So as uh, Sridha saw Krishna on the altar and everything was dancing the toenails, the fingernails, his cheeks, his eyes, he, he just fell in love with that Krishna. All the devatas beginning with Rama, uh, or, or, or Lord Rama and Shiva, praised and served him. There were the great rishis Sanaka, Narada, Shuka, and the great saints who glorified him. In all the four directions there were the beautiful gopis of the Lord who were praising him with folded hands. And above Lord Krishna was Ananta Shesha with the thousands of heads who was protecting the Lord like his umbrella. Uh, as Shrita saw this vision, he reeled, reeled this he couldn't stand any longer. He just turned. He stared at the vision in front of him. Various emotions crowded his heart, like awe and wonderment. And finally, he became totally overwhelmed with love. 
and fell to the ground. But the Lord was not satisfied when Sridhar fainted. He said, Oh Sridhar, get up and chant my praises. Sridhar got up and said, I'm foolish. I'm not a Brahmana. I'm an ordinary banana seller. I cannot compose any prayers. And the Lord said, Anything you say, Sridhar, is as valuable for me as the sound of the Vedas. I think we can understand this. Madhva Muni and Kishori have a child called uh, Shriji. And I remember when Shriji first started to speak. They said, wow, this is a very good utterance. And when they gave Shriji some Prashada and Shriji said, no, 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 no. They said, a very good assessment of the quality of the food. You are knowing everything. For the loving parents, every word of the child is full of meaning. We may think, what a Krishna, what does he say? He's an educated boy. But the parents will protest. No, 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 no. Our boy is highly expressive. You just don't understand correctly. So, the Lord likes uh, more the words of his devotees, even his uneducated devotees, than he likes the praises of the Vedic scriptures. But because the Lord wanted that a secret is revealed through Shrita, he ordered Saraswati to appear on the tongue of Shrita. And in this way, Shrita began to call out. Jaya Jaya Mahaprabhu Jaya Vishwambara who is born from the womb of Mother Sachi and walks now through our town of Navadvi. Jaya Jaya Veda Gopya Principles. In the past, you appeared in Goloka Vindavan and made it glorious. But now, you have come here to our Navadvi and made that town glorious. You were wandering with your two feet through our streets and our lanes. No one could recognize you. Previously you had personally told me that the water of Mother Ganga has emanated from your lotus feet. But my sinful heart did not recognize you and I couldn't believe what you said. You are only known through Bhakti. Thank you. You are known only by Bhakti. And Bhakti conquers you. Therefore you keep it concealed and hidden. This is usually Krishna knows. Anyone who has Bhakti has the key to my heart. Therefore he doesn't give it very easily. 
But as Gauranga Mahaprabhu, in, in your present incarnation, you are freely distributing it. Because they had bhakti, Bhishma defeated you by making you break your promise. Because she had bhakti, Yashoda bound you. Because she had bhakti, Satya Bhama actually bound you and then sold you to Narada Muni for a little price. Uh, because he had bhakti, Sridham was carried by you. Although you are carried in the minds of all living entities in the universe, you have personally carried Sridham. And then, then uh, Shrita said something valuable. Like a king who hides his treasures, he kept Bhakti hidden. But no, no, your hiding is over. Shattered. <laughs> In the past, you were conquered only by two or four persons. But just see, now the whole world, including even some people from Serbia, stand before your door and beg you for Bhakti. Soon you will be bound and you will be in the possession of all these people because they just need to sing the holy name with full attention and Bhakti will come in their heart. And when they have Bhakti in their heart, they will see you. When the exalted Vaishnavas heard what Sridhar said, they were struck with amazement. They didn't know what you know that Saraswati was speaking from the tongue of Sridhar. And they called him from that day on Sridhar Pandit. <laughs> because he had revealed a secret through his devotees. Um, that is, that he can be known through Bhakti. Then the Lord decided to demonstrate the greatness of Sridha. <laughs>
Some of us were in the forest where there are some energy circles and Bali was flying like five centimeters over the ground from the energy. Small anima city. When you have the full anima city, you can fly from here to Vindavan without paying any dinar. <laughs> Mahima. You can become greater than the greatest of all mountains. Lagima, become lighter than the lightest. Prabhdi, acquire whatever you desire, including a Serbian villa. Prakambya, the power to do just anything within the scope of material nature. <coughs> Prabhupada said he had a teacher who was a mystic yogi who had this this Prabhdi city, and once he asked the children, what do you want to have? And the children said, pomegranate apples from Kabul, Afghanistan. <laughs> the yogi went like, Tsk, and said, Tsk, go into my sleeping room, there you will find your pomegranates. And then the children went inside the, the, uh, the place, they saw on the bed pomegranates freshly plucked from a tree in Afghanistan. Eight powers are like this. And the Lord said, come on, ask them. You can have them. But Sridha said, <laughs> no, I don't want anything. Uh, Already in the past you have cheated me by giving some little price 
for my products. I don't want anything from you. But Sridhar said, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and tested him a second time. You are so poor. Look at your shirt. Your shirt has holes. It is not a very good shirt. The roof on your house is so lack, we say in German. It is so lack that uh, the, the, the rain comes through it. Ask for some good house. But Srila said, no, no. If there's anything I should desire, there's only one thing. Let that beautiful Brahmin boy who came with his curly hair and snatched the bananas from me after arguing lovingly with me. Let he come to me birth after birth. Let me supply bananas for him uh, forever, forever and ever. Gauranga Mahaprabhu, you know, he, who had, this was most probably the poorest of Lord Chaitanya's devotees because he's, he gave half of what he had obeyed, was so pleased, my dear devotee, so absolutely happy, that he said, uh, my dear Shrikha, today I give you what not even Brahma and Shiva have. Do you know what that is? Nike sport shoes or <laughs> a what? Prema Bhakti! Love of Krishna, I give you this in your heart. And he gave it and blessed our Shrita. All the, it is hidden in the Vedas. Therefore the shloka said, Veda Gopya Bhakti Yoga. The Bhakti which is so confidential that even the Vedas don't know about the intimate dealings of Krishna and the cowherd boys and the cowherd girls of Vrindavan. And when all the Vaishnavas heard this, the fortune of Shrita, who was trembling and crying as he received the Prema Bhakti and the symptoms of ecstasy crowded over his body like ants which crowd over a piece of wood. When they saw this, they all shouted very loudly, Jai! 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 My dear devotees, we learn here from Chaitanya Bhagavad a different value system. Amongst us human beings, someone is valuable when he is intelligent or rich or comes from a good family or is beautiful like Govinda Nanda. Um, we, we, uh, uh, we are... Uh, thinking uh, like then someone is very fortunate but the value system in Bhakti Sangha and the association of devotees is only this one that is that uh, you are when you are, have Bhakti in your heart you are actually beautiful and nice we can see this now I remember we have a little charity in Vrindavan it's called Braj care, where we took, take care of poor sadhus by giving them homopathic medicines and take care of their little houses uh, so that they are safe. We have now exported many raincoats that, so that the sadhus who do Govada Parikrama in the monsoon have a first class Chinese raincoat. Uh, <laughs> we have done such things uh, uh, with our branch care and uh, there was one famous ethnologist you know the, the, uh, it was a professor from the London University who studies the cultures of different people who wanted to make a movie about the widows of Radha Kund and she, she came with her camera team and contacted our people at Radakund who are taking care of branch care. And they took them to all the to the widows. Now these are the poorest ladies in India. But because they have 
bhakti in their heart. The ethnologist said, I've never seen such deep beauty. All Yamadajis like to be beautiful in the face, and the men like to be beautiful in the muscles. Uh, uh, real beauty really is bhakti, because it's the beauty of the heart, which can touch the heart of others also. So that is the ethnologist, he, she said, just by looking into the faces of the widows of Radha Kund, I am beginning to understand that our modern value system, which is based on money and external beauty, is uh, not good uh, as long as it does not make the heart beautiful. And she, uh, so Sridha, the poorest of the poor, wanted Prema Bhakti in his heart. That made him truly remarkable. We will now come to the end. And the last night came. Anyone who hears about the last night will cry. My dear devotees, it was the last night which Goranga Mahaprabhu spent in Navadri. The next morning, it was January, very cold, like this climate, even colder. He would swim over the Ganga, he would turn his back to the people who loved him the most, just like Krishna, who left Vrindavan, Guranga Mahaprabhu would leave Navadri. On the evening of the last night, he sat with his beautiful hair on the banks of the Ganga. <coughs> and all the Navadri Basis came. Uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu received garlands from each one. And uh, as he received one garland, he gave another garland away and put it around the neck of the Vaishnavas. And he said to the Vaishnavas, I want to give you three orders. If you love me, keep these three orders. Glorify Krishna, Bhaja Krishna, worship Krishna, and chant the name of Krishna. Do not think of anything else than Krishna throughout the 24 hours of the night. It is said, as the Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the garland, it said this, he gave an order for everyone and uh, he said whether you are sleeping, eating or waking, day and night, think of Krishna, chant his name. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati comments on this, this means 24 hour kirtan and being in Krishna consciousness, he, he said, for one who has heard the kirtan inaugurated by Gora, there's no instruction to stop thinking of Krishna or chanting his names 24 hours every day, even while eating, sleeping or waking. Since Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, if you have any affection for me, no other sound should come from your lips than Krishna. What do you think about this? When I heard it, I thought, well, this is the movement I have joined. It's a movement of intense absorption. Do you know absorption, the word absorption? This cloth was once as white as the full moon, but then it was put into a saffron colored thing mm. and it was, it's called in English, it was dying, it was absorbing the color and now has the color. This is what we want to do ultimately with our mind. We want to absorb it 
so much in Krishna that everything else goes. Led Zeppelin goes, uh, money goes, uh, sex goes, uh, everything. The only, only thing left is Krishna. This is the program of Krishna Samadhi which the devotees of Krishna want to adopt slowly, slowly. That evening, when Lord Chaitanya garlanded the whole town of Navadvi, which came as if called personally, by personal invitation, he knew, oh, tomorrow, before the night ends, I will not see these devotees. I will swim over the Ganga and go to Katwa and shave my hair and there will be at that time lamentation that I have left. What to do? So in the evening everyone was almost gone. All of a sudden Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says sees Sridhar coming. Sridhar is very poor as you know, but he lovingly brought to the Lord a pumpkin. It's called a bottle god. It looks a little bit like this and then it goes up like this from his own roof in the hut. And he said, for you, my dear Brahman boy, Ranga Mahaprabhu took it with tears in his eyes. And he knew this is my dear devotee who has given an offering, but I won't have time to eat it. Tomorrow I'm not there. So he went to Mother Sachi and said, I have to accept the offering of Shreta. I'm not accustomed to eat so late, but I will have to accept. But that person at that time another fortunate person brought some milk. Mother Sachi boiled the pumpkin in the milk and served it to Goranga, who accepted the loving offering of Shrita. The Lord is Bhaktavatsala, the protector and friend of his devotees. And he accepted loving offering, the final offering. Uh, my dear devotees, the Lord will always accept our loving offering without any question. He will only look for one thing in that offering. Do you know what it is? Love. Love. Bhakti. Bhakti. Yes. Patram pushpam phalam toyam Yome Bhakta Prayashati. The Lord will not accept anything else, only the Bhakti. If that is not there in your preparation, your preparation is still incomplete. Only when Bhakti is there is your preparation fully complete. This is what Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed by the glorious example of Sri Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Oh, 
It was my hope to bring a little bit of the Goranga culture uh, to your kind attention. In doing the seminars, we heard about Lord Chaitanya's uh, wonderful, um, how do you say, exchanges with uh, Haridas Thakur, for instance, and with Mukunda and Kolamesha Shrita. We heard about Lord Chaitanya dancing at Ratha Yatra. And uh, we, in this way, could understand a little bit more about Chaitanya Bhakti and the speciality, how it is, what is, what we need to understand about it, and what we can imbibe in our lives. Um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he once said that there should be Gora Kata, or the talk about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for for the whole day, uh, really. And uh, 
I, I would like to tell you why I personally have a great interest in where I live. Um, where do I really live? I travel so much, but my base is in um, Gorabhavan and I live near to a, a large Vaishnava community uh, which uh, is based in a castle called the Dharma Castle. There are many families living around uh, and they earn money by the Time Waver Company. It's a company which Kadaka has founded and which engages many Grihastas uh, and takes care of their livelihood. So, anyway, so every Ekadasi, I'm invited there to come into the castle and I talk already since a few years about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It started in Berlin uh, when I moved to Berlin. And, uh, what we found out is uh, that as we hear about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees, we do get an idea and an inspiration for Chaitanya Bhakti. That's so important. I think we all know by now that in, if in our lives we have some Bhakti with us, that is very, very useful. Um, uh, bhakti just transports our whole life and makes every step wonderful and, and, and enriches it. It makes, it makes us real people, really. So, um, this is, uh, I wanted to share with you my own enthusiasm and inspiration about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees. And uh, I wanted to also make, of course, the point how important the, and how wonderful the chanting of the Holy Name can be. Now, we have a little bit of uh, time, uh, maybe 12 minutes, and I can see there. Uh, where we can see if you have any questions regarding these subjects or subjects uh, bordering, I mean, this, this type of subject. Please see. Yes, Ananda Gopal. I have a question with to the morning, Bhagavad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you get the mic even because I can speak so loud? Yes, there's a, a microphone, Madhuri Manjari, for Ananda Gopal. As you mentioned in a Bhagavatam class in the morning that the solution for the problem of a material attachment and everything is that we should associate with the devotees. And uh, my question is uh, that I notice that um, as we come in association with devotees, we also come with our anarthas, our false evil, um, temp temperament and etc. And what you know because of that, we sometimes or often um, we make a Vaishnava, we made a Vaishnava parada, and that parada um, maybe put us aside for a short or long period in you know from the association of devotees. So my question is how to deal with that and how to because. How to deal with that? Because, as you also mentioned, uh, Dr. Jung, it called uh, shadow in psychology. This because we cannot get rid of our shadow so easily. We, it's always come with us. Our nature is always with us because we are not so pure. So, how to be in association of devotees and not to allow to our nature make you know the problems? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nanda Gopal. Mm -hmm. There's a wonderful, there are wonderful verses which describe to us how these dark shadows in the heart uh, move out it's when the sun uh, of Krishna raises rises in the heart, then that goes. Um, I think, you know, when we have a devotee association, the instruction is really to act also as devotees. That is, to hear in the association of devotees about Krishna, 
often what I see in temples is we, we have morning program, uh, but uh, we limit the discussion about Krishna uh, just to the morning program, if at all. I know, I, I've heard there are some temples where the speakers just talk Monday politics in the, in the Bhagavatam class. I have, I have heard this is happening in the Vatican. I do not know, but I have heard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the devotee association only works mm, to, to remove the shadows in the heart when there is actually discussion about Krishna and service to Krishna, and not in a formal way. Formal way means, okay, Bhagavatam class, 45 minutes, mm, half of the mm, group uh, of devotees is anyways asleep or anticipating breakfast. Uh, and, uh, and then you know there is not, and then the rest of the day just talk, talk roughly about what needs to be done. No, no, the the idea is the body association needs much sita, much kata, prana, bodayam, tas And I think we we have so many devotees, but we need to learn to associate devotionally. Then, then this happens, then the purity and the purification takes place. It is said that in the devotee association, uh, two things happen, and you can see when it's a real devotee as association, the first is the matihi, your inner orientation and inclination, has to go towards Krishna. Then it's the right association. If this is not happening, if your inclination or your mind is becoming disturbed, it was not really the real thing. It was, it looked like it, but it was not the real thing. And it needs to be corrected. You know what I have seen in my personal life? That uh, there are many subjects in, in a movement and subjects where uh, you have one opinion and other devotees have another opinion. There the eternal dilemma, I believe it's a false dilemma, between the conservist, conservist uh, uh, group and the liberal group. I, I think it's a wrong dilemma. I think both of the viewpoints have, are, are very important to come to a well-rounded picture of so on. But we find that often there's quarrel, mm -hmm. you know? old school, new school, you, you, you know. Both schools are important uh, uh, if they are following Prabhupada and then so on. Uh, and I have sometimes seen that, the, that uh, in my life I am always a creative preacher, I've always been outside and uh, I'm sometimes grouped personally to be a member of the new school or the liberal thinking devotees. I, I'm not fully co confident that I am, but this is how sometimes people think about uh, Sachinana Swami. And I have sometimes disagreed very strongly with uh, what I consider uh, a view which does not take into account all of Prabhupada's instructions, but just call, just takes one view and then calls itself, call, we, we are conserving Prabhupada's statement. I have sometimes disagreed strongly. But what I found out that after discussing with the good devotees about these different views and see, can we come to a complete picture please? And there are many wonderful devotees with whom you can talk responsibility. We say, let us put this now aside and talk about our experiences in Krishna consciousness. And the moment we talk about Krishna conscious experiences or we talk about Krishna, we have seen that you know, there, there, there is no longer the idea of conflict or disagreement because you come to another level. I have personally seen this very often. And I have, very, I have been in these discussions because I'm an older devotee and I, I'm, I'm doing many things in the service of Prabhupada and therefore these discussions come and I 
power is seen uh, even in, when, when there are strong disagreements be, before, because of different perspectives and different pers It doesn't matter when you come to a common ground. And I believe it is very necessary uh, that, that this common ground is very much cultivated about amongst devotees. We need to have care on the evenings. We need to, dare I say, we need to sometimes speak about Krishna. We are also, after all, called the Krishna conscious movement, you know. Best we do this 24 hours a day, uh, but if we can't, at least 10 minutes, you know. Some Krishna conscious talk, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and so on. And then we will rise to a level where uh, Goranga Mahaprabhu will come into the heart of the, he will drive out the shadow like the sun and the moon. Lord Chaitanya Nityananda will appear simultaneously in the heart and drive that out. That will happen. Uh, I think sometimes devotees make it very simple. They think, oh yeah, devotee association, okay, let's go and talk about uh, the football. Uh, you know, that's after all the most important subject now in the world. It's in the every TV and so on. So let us to Brazil, who? Oh, Germany? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so on. But then you will invite Maya into the discussion. That is not a devotee. Uh, 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 it is a devotee assembly, but there is no Krishna devotee talk there. And there is darkness in the assembly. There's a very big problem now, you know, very big problem. Have you heard about the conflict of Russia and Ukraine? And it is very big. I was there, the devotees came and said, Sachinanda Maharaj, what should we come? What should we do? We are in our house. All of a sudden the soldiers come and shoot our mother. Can we take a gun and shoot the soldiers? Or a Krishna. That, such discussions are there. And the... the uh, and the, mm, the, mm, and the impression is because of media that Russia went into Ukraine and, and took the Krim area by force and now some Ukrainian devotees feel Russians are bad and there is even on internet bad Russians, uh, right, the Ukraine devotees, bad Russian devotees. It, it comes all of a sudden on a Monday platform. The leaders have to tell the devotees because the conflict is so hot at the moment. Don't, don't, don't leave Krishna consciousness out of it. We are different people. We are not Russians in Ukraine. People, we are servants of Krishna. Because the emotions can become so strong. And this I can see also in our devotee associations like, uh, you know, in, in, in the, sometimes the disagreement becomes so strong that the two sides just cannot find any point of agreement any longer. This is sad uh, because they forget there is a point of agreement that is Krishna. And that should be, should be cultivated more. Thank you very much for your important question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was another at Gogovinda. Oh, you're the best man. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday you spoke about uh, the three hearts of bhakti. Yeah. And uh, I know what you're going to ask, but ask it anyways. Okay. Uh, the first heart is similar to the third heart. Yes, the first heart is similar to the third and the... Please, if you can shut your mouth. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can read minds. <laughs> can we, Kishori, can you please go back to the three arts? Maybe the, this original piece of art is still <laughs> available. Or? Yes, Hare Krishna. We can take it here so that the devotees can see. Maya, you can sit there for just a moment. So here you see a simple module of based on Rupa Goswami's uh, description, what is Bhakti? He said, 
The primary symptoms means Swarup Lakshana is please help me in Sanskrit. Adhyavi Lakshana is the Anna Kamati and Avitam. Anu Kulyena Krishna no Shilanam Bhakti Uttama. Bhakti Uttama, that is the highest bhakti. Anu Kulyena, which is done with the mood to please favorable mood. Anukul yena krishna nu bu krishnam and then shilanam. It's an endeavor which involves body, mind and speech to serve Krishna. This is directly from the Sanskrit. We find three ingredients there. It must be done for Krishna no, no, it, it's for Krishna and it's a passive and not a passive, an active engagement and there must be a certain intention. Look, Kamsa also f fought with Krishna but he didn't have the intention to please Krishna and therefore his activity was not bhakti. But Shrida fought with Krishna but he wanted to please Krishna and therefore it's bhakti. So it's the intention, I, I think. The intention must be there, Gokovinda. If you do, and I see this as very important. Devotees usually act, 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 act. But what is motivation? What is the motivation? What is the intention behind it? The intention, we must uh, get it in our heart. It must be to please. You must. You, you might say, well. For Krishna, see the, the idea is for Krishna, you, an activity, and the intention of doing the activity is to please. It's about intention, the last point. To satisfy, to give pleasure. It is really said like this. Kamsa was also fighting with Krishna. So two points of the formula were, were there. <laughs> but he wanted to kill Krishna. It was no good intention. Have you ever thought, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing this program, yoga is music and zaga, and I want, want to do it so nice, with such nice decorations. And Krishna is just so pleased. This is how, how you, you do something for Bhakti. Now, uh, glance at the clock reveals that it's 7 o'clock. I thank you once again very much for your kind attendance. I hope there was something in, in there for you to give inspiration to your Krishna consciousness. And I wish, oops, I wish you all the best. And may Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bless you and be in your heart. And uh, yes, well, well I'm, I'm there tomorrow still. Oh, the day after tomorrow, yeah, it's not over yet. It's just, uh, it's only the third part. The so, uh, second part has started, or the third part of the summer camp. We still, we see each other. Tomorrow will also be a program. Here is Harikamuni, um, we want to say something. Hare Krishna, Haribo! Hare.